thank you for joining us on today's tour of Starbase. Remember to stay with your group, stay out of the unauthorized areas, and keep your hands and feet inside the launch vehicle at all times. It's time for another Starbase summary, kicking it off with a booster spin prime here. A little bit of a foggy day, both fogs up in the air, natural fog, naturally occurring fog, and some unnaturally occurring fog down here around the launch pad. But you can see the ice up on the vehicle, and there's the big whoosh of the Spin Prime flowing propellants through the vehicle without actually causing any fire or thrust or anything like that to occur. That's a spin prime, just making sure that everything's ready to go. All the pipes and fittings and pumps and systems and sensors and people. Everything required to get a launch. It's pretty close to a launch, actually. But here's a shot from Mary as the ice melts off of the side. And a dreary day out there at the launch pad. Good times. That is slow motion, I guess, because that's a part that is not very high frame rate vehicle, but that part going by, it looks like that was choppy because we slowed it down so you could see that weird looking part. This here looks like it's Ship 35's payload bay being pulled across the yard there. Oh, got some labels on it. We've got some safety warnings as well, and it's making its way all the way into the high bay. Excellent. It's so crazy that they just move those around with like modified pallet jacks person like guiding it sort of says, I think it's power assisted right for sure it's power assisted but let's get over here to the South Padre Island side this is a drone show that happened and it was I think sponsored in part by SpaceX there's a SpaceX logo in here coming up but uh, Jack rolled out and got close up to the fleet array of drones I really, I mean, do these things blink lights so you know which one needs a battery or they'll start up at the same time? I've never actually seen one of these super close up. Are all these people that work for the, the drone show company, they've got on these high-vis vests and they're all walking along? Huh, it takes almost as many people as it does drones to make these things happen. <laughs> Anyways, if you haven't seen one of these, you're in for a treat. There are uh, more and more of them happening, but the synchronized drone shows where a computer system controls at hundreds, I don't know if there's a thousand here, but controls hundreds of drones all in sync in 3D space even, right? It's not even just a, a 2D sort of thing. To make these uh, light sculptures in the sky, I don't know, what would you call them? But they're animated. These drones are moving around like, uh, not really pixels, it's more like dot art, right? But the drones all move in sync. Uh, is that a cow being milked? What? What? Okay. All right, this person is playing a trumpet, I guess, but they also maybe had a drum. The writing in the sky here is going to say happy holidays. you got to sort of turn your head a little bit to read it. What else do we have? Ah, yeah, baby. yes. Looks to me like a Falcon 9. I think it needs a little bit more plume expansion there on the bottom drone show operators. Uh, the straight lines are a little confusing. <laughs> but that's honestly really cool. Let's see what else we get. I, th I think they morph into... Survey says a SpaceX logo. All right. And some snow or something in the background. Some five-pointed stars. Which would necessarily be snow, I guess. But anyways, idealized stars there. What else do we have? Ah, this is sped up. Are they coming down? Yeah, they're like descending from the show, all landing in their ranks. Sure. I guess ranks is probably a fair thing to say there. Anyways, you know, I t <laughs> okay, it's cool that we use these for, like, the show sort of thing. <sighs> Drones are going to be used for a lot of things in the future, and seeing them move in sync like that is kind of really cool and also kind of scary. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> moving right along, here we see the dance floor, dance floor, 
being removed. You can see that there it goes rolling away. It was lowered down on cables. And here you can see that the wings are sort of folded down. Again, this is the thing we say looks a little bit like a like a miniature sand crawler. Hey, that's where we put our cameras for flight. Better not become a dance floor parking lot. That's where the trailer goes. This danger lot where it was parking there. But look how clean the pad looks. So, well, this guy drives back over here. Okay, there you go. Picked up somebody and drove away. Uh, pad very clean looking there. Preparing for some testing that's coming up. Or was coming up. There's another tank rolling in. And here we get into the static fire testing. All right. Good deal. See that OLM vent going like crazy. Oh, there's the frost forming. That's what we're showing here. A time lapse of the propellants being pumped into the booster. So the atmosphere freezing to the outside of the giant stainless steel tumbler that is the booster. Nice framing of the historical marker sign there. Got a little bit of a tilt. This is a time lapse. An unattended camera that Mary set over there to catch what's going on. Still love the clouds in the background there. All right, here we go. Static fire. Still have some audio. It's the deluge. And the static fire. Gonna have a couple different angles of this, I believe. We we're of course streaming this live, talking about what was going on and the status and uh, sort of a real-time commentary as it was happening here on the channel. You know, I'm always curious how many people here just mostly watch videos. Another shot of the static fire. That's a long static fire, but even there you can see the shock waves coming out from underneath the rocket. Oh, that's too cool. Such a good angle over there. I, I was asking how many people here mostly watch live streams. Of course, this is a, wow, interesting exposure test on a camera here. It looks like we've dumped the exposure in order to try and get a little bit more detail from the flames. Gives a little bit of a blue tint there, the way that camera specifically dumps the exposure. Anyways, who watches live streams? Who watches videos? Of course... This is not a fair question because you're hearing this question on a video right now, and so it might heavily be weighted toward people who watch videos. Well, because if you only watch the live streams or help you the shorts, uh, you wouldn't be watching this video. <laughs> do you even know we do live streams? <laughs> Maybe that's a better question. But marching forward in the test campaign, you're going to have audio on the first couple there. But uh, if you want to listen to the audio from all these different angles, of course, you can switch audio tracks. But the test can campaign marching forwards as they get that booster ready for the next flight of Starship. Guys, all the work in the foreground, like all the construction equipment and everything, and then the just, you know, the rocket casually firing engines in the background there. It is one of the big things they have to shut down the work at uh, the other pads and other areas when they want to do a static fire test like this. But quick view up the road at the Rocket Garden. Not totally full right now. They're removing some of the scaffolding from the corner of the high bay. We sort of uh, guessed that in previous videos that they might not leave that there. Are they going to just make room for something else? I don't know. Are they going to put in more permanent platforms, one way to find out. But over this way, nighttime view here, we've got the booster being removed from the orbital launch mount, but not just removed, they lifted it way up almost to the top of the tower there. And quite see, let's see if we get another backed off angle. Yeah, like catch height. Look at that. Usually they'll just barely clear the OLM and then swing it over. Oh, look at that. Okay, I'm sorry, but that's a cool shot. That's a very cool shot. 
the sun rising in the background there. Lower it down onto the booster transport stand. You can see the white railing that's around the top of the booster transport stand. And then there's the black main structure. And you'll see it's sort of anti-parallel park. I guess it's sort of backing out of the parking space there. And rolling that booster all the way back to the production site. Not a big deal. Doesn't mean they found any massive issues or anything like that. It's actually pretty uh, standard that they'll get out there, do the static fire test, and then bring it back in for the final checkouts, closeouts, etc. Look at that nice booster transport stand. We're going to zoom in a little bit here to see what we can see of the engines. Here you go. Can you see a number on that engine? It's down at the bottom because that's the, that's the shield on the side of the engine that you mainly see there. We almost need the camera to be you know, six feet taller to see in the little passageway, portal, the rectangular oval s shape. I don't know what the thing's called, but there you go. You can also see the reflection of the camera lens. There is the booster transport stand again. It switched away just as I mentioned it before. But these purpose-built fixtures that they put SPMTs underneath, booster on top, and transport it back and forth down the road. Let's catch it from the production site angle here. A little reflection action happening in the puddles on the side of the room. Also some reflections happening on the side of the, uh, the building there, the Star Factory. Sheriff in full force as well, making sure people keep clear of this thing. Look at the clearance, those those big rusty looking mounts that drop down that it sits on when the SPMT kneels out from underneath it, those big beefy pipe mounts. <laughs> it's still a little crazy when you speed it up, how much it sort of waggles on the top, right? I wonder how many feet back and forth that is. Scooting over to the assembly area, work continues on pad B's <laughs> orbital launch mount. We've got some flame verter, flame diverter construction that we caught as well. Looks like we're assembling this over on the side and then as one big unit it'll be moved into its final position. We've got a barrel section being moved with a barrel section spreader. Why does it say keep OT? Keep QT? I wonder what that said. On I don't think it said keep out. Did it? Anyways, cool black Buckner crane there. I wonder if they got a special black crane that would fit in better at uh, <laughs> SpaceX. There's a nose cone that we get an angle in the high bay there. Those new flap designs look a little bit crazy, but I like this. Okay, we've gone back to this sort of shot for the outro. Folks, a little bit of a ramble there, but I appreciate you joining us for the Starbase summary. It's just me, John. Galloway talking about what I see in the video. Big thanks to the team that makes it happen, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.